Hey, welcome to Mama Llama Razzle Dazzle. Um, today I'm going to start making bowl pot holders. They're microwavable bowl pot holders. So you will have a, a pot holder around your bowl of soup or even ice cream. It's uh, just something to keep the hot or the cold away from your hands. And there's a craft show coming up to support um, a cat shelter. And so I chose a piece of material that is kind of flashy and will catch someone's eye, but it also has, besides the tie dye, it has little black paw prints, so they could be cat prints or dog prints. And what I have done is I've washed this already um, because I want to shrink it. I want to get the chemicals out of it. I don't want to handle it with chemicals. Um, and I also want people to be able to wash those pot holders every time they get something on them, you know, to keep them clean. So everything's shrunk now and it should be um, good for washing for the lifetime of the pot holder. So I just wanted to show you that I had this and that I did wash it and that, you know it's raggy and we're not going to worry about any of that. And in a little bit um, um, I'll come back and I'll show you how I actually prepare the materials. We're going to need 10 inch squares of this cotton fabric and we need two 10 inch squares per pot holder. So I usually tear mine um, and I will show you that in a little bit. <laughs> Now today we're going to show you how to um, rip the 10 inch squares to make the bowl pot holders. So we had um, four yards of this material. It was flannel cotton and I pre-washed it um, to shrink it and get it all uh, ready to be washed over and over again. So just for the sake of this video and making it a little easier to work with I cut off about 40 inches, 45 inches. So what I'm going to do first is square up my material. Now I don't have a lot of space. Part of this uh, video series is how to work in small spaces and I definitely have small spaces. Can't uh, even lay out two yards of material in a row in my house. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to work with what you got. Okay, so. Along the rough side, like where the material was cut um, from the store and then washed, it frayed out. Now this line where they cut is probably not straight. I want to make sure that the cloth is absolutely square. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the selvage and cut about a half inch mark. And I'm going to tear it. And you'll see that it goes from skinny to fat. But what I do know is that this edge is now straight. And so there may be a little waste here, but um, we make rag rugs. <laughs> so this piece will be fat enough to put into a rag rug so I don't waste anything. I will cut off this little white spot. And I'll roll it with the stringy side in. And I'll just roll it in a ball. And some of these I'll just uh, tear off. But I want it to kind of show the color when I make the rag rug. And if I prepare it as I go, it's not such a big job when we get to making the rug. So there will be future videos <laughs> where I show you how to make rag rugs on a couple different looms. And you'll see that you have, by the time you're done with your quilt and with your uh, projects and the rag rugs, you'll have like very little waste, a whole handful for yards and yards that you've used. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll this in a ball and I'll stick it in a basket where I keep my little odds and ends. Alright, now we've straightened out that edge. You see how nice and straight that is. Now we're going to cut off the selvages. So I go just a little bit above the white and tear that off. And this kind of stuff, the selvages, help when you're making rugs to use a little packing before the actual rug gets started. So I save this too. Also goes in another little basket. <laughs> this is not gonna go to waste. Okay, now this side um, I tore this off of the yardage that I had so I know this edge is straight. 
And I'm going to go over to the third selvage, and this is the one that's usually colorful, and you can't always tell, but if you use this, it's a much tighter weave for about a half inch, and it'll often get cause you problems in quilts and other things you make. So cut it off, and rip it, and then put it in the rug bag. So now we need 10 inch squares, so we want to get the most squares out of our yardage here. So I'm going to just measure, and if I get like to 40 with just a very little waist, then that's the way I'll make four squares across. So I'm at 14. Right, so I've got 45 inches that way. Let me just check the other way because we want to get the most possible squares out of this. And of course we'll use the pieces left over in a quilt, but it would be good if we could get more squares than not. And this is for a fundraiser craft show, so you want to try to get the most out of it. Okay, so here we are at 41 inches. So I'm going to cut 10 inch lines um, across this way because we'll get more out of it. Okay, so we'll go back to the edge. Um, I just have to explain that one of the reasons I am not using one of those green mats with the rotary cutter, it looks like a pizza cutter, is because the mat company that makes the green mats uh, won't tell me what's in them and I think it's latex because it reseals itself right it covers up where the slice was from the cutter and I'm severely allergic to latex so I can't use those I know there's other kinds but it's usually um, some kind of uh, copyright, well not copyright, like a trademark and they can't tell me what's in them or they won't and I don't want to know all the ingredients I just wanted to know if there was latex but they won't tell me okay so I'm, I'm at the edge here and I'm going to my 10 inch mark on the tape and I'm just going to make a little slit there and before I go on I'm going to rip that row And as I'm ripping, if this is decent, good quality flannel, it will rip square. And if it's not, I shouldn't be using it anyway. So this looks good. I'll put that aside. And then I'm going to make four more rows like that. Or three more rows, sorry. So we'll put the tape measure right there. And then our 10 inches is here. Finally, you always get these extra things ripping off. Don't um, tear them all the way down because you'll start losing yardage or inches off your thing. Just cut them. Alright, we're going to get two more. So there's our zero, and here's our ten. One more. Let's see, we're only going to have one inch left. So that little piece, you guessed it, it's going in a rug. While I'm here, take it just an extra minute, turning the pretty side out. And putting it in the basket. Okay, now we have 10 inches in one direction, now we've got to go 10 inches in this direction. So, put the zero. You can see 
and then there's another 10. Now, there's another way you could do this. If you had a 10 inch template, you could chalk them all off and cut them. But because I've been tearing them, I'm ending up with something that's on the straight of the grain and completely square. And that is the goal. And in this particular kind of pot holder, a square is important. Okay, so I'm going to now rip the rest of these. I'll rip a few more for you to see. And then I will keep going with the pile. And then I'll come back and see you. And while you're at it, take your strings off and make them nice and neat because it'll just make a neater job when you're done. Take the time to do it. It's a good idea to use a good material scissors also. You don't ever want to cut paper with the material scissors, so make sure you keep them out of in the hands of the kids because scissors are scissors to them but after a while they won't cut any material for you if you don't okay we're going to get our last one Ten inches. and then we're left with this nice size piece so I'm going to put that in one of my minky quilts and I'll have a video for you on minky quilts too. <laughs> okay, so we got four out of that. We have three more to cut um, and I'll get another 12 out of there. Plus I'm going to finish um, ripping the squares for the rest of this yardage. And what I'm going to do is show you how to make one bowl pot holder from beginning to end. And then I'm going to show you how to do it in production. So if you're doing them for a craft show or Christmas gifts or anything like that, I'll show you a quick way to get a whole bunch of them done. Okay, so I'll catch up with you when we're ready to start putting the batting in. Okay, so after we have our 10 inch squares cut, we need two per pot holder. We're going to cut the batting. That goes inside. So these are 10 inch by 10 inch and we don't want to cut the batting 10 inch by 10 inch because it would go all the way out to the edge. So what I do is I make it about nine and a half inches. Now I use um, crib size battings that are 100% cotton. They um, have no scrim or polyester. Um, the reason for that is if you put it in the microwave, you don't want it to be uh, getting hot on the polyester and cause a fire. The other thing about this um, is anything will burn if it's in there long enough, right? So you don't want to have them, uh, the pot holders in there for more than seven minutes, I think was the last thing I read about this. So I would say, you know, if you heat your stuff up for like four minutes and check it, and then do it four minutes again and check it. You'll be better off uh, and you shouldn't have any trouble. I've been using these bowl pot holders made exactly like I'm showing you today for a couple years now. I wash them often and I use them every day to heat things up. So um, I've never had any trouble with anything burning. But you don't want to be careless about anything that you're cooking. Okay? So um, what I do now to make the inside of the pot holder is I go about nine and a half inches and this doesn't have to be like super super um, perfect because it's going to be inside and you're probably going to trim a little bit of it anyway so I just mark I fold my um, batting so that I have four layers to cut that way it's not too much to cut and then I just mark nine and a half inches for a length If you're going to do this the right way, I mean like the most exact way, you could get yourself a ruler and draw the straight line between the dots. But usually I just eyeball it to get my nine and a half inches. So, and I just cut it. Okay. 
And like I said, I work in very small amount of space. That's part of why I'm showing you how to work in small spaces. I only have this little spot on the table, really. I don't have enough spot space in this house to um, give myself a lot of room, and that's okay. Um, you just have to adapt to it and do the best you can. Okay, so here we are on the table, and that means, like, that's why I work with... Um, the crib size battings because then it doesn't get to be so much that I don't know where to go with it all. I don't really think it costs that much more. It might be a little bit, but it's not enough to make it worth it for me to struggle with a queen size batting or something. Okay, so now I turned this piece of batting so I have the nine and a half and I want to go nine and a half the other way. So we're just going to be making squares. So there's one set and now I'm just going to keep cutting this baby or crib size batting until I've gotten all of it cut. Um, I'm going to be making 20 pot holders for a fundraiser. So I will actually show you how to make one all the way through and then I'll keep the video rolling for you and show you how I mass produce um, and make them all at once and do one step at a time. Okay, so this piece doesn't look like it's big enough. Let me measure it for sure. There's always other pot holders down the road. This is nine inches and I don't think I'd really use it because it will... Um, here, I'll show you. If I use the nine inch on the back of this one, you know, it I actually could, I guess. It's harder if the um, if it comes over the edge because you want to be able to see your edges. And like I said, this isn't rocket science. <laughs> it's, it's just padding for inside the pot holder. So I guess I will. I'll use this nine inch piece. My nine and a half might be a little bit bigger than that. So it looks like it covers it nicely. What's going to happen is you're going to stitch down here. I'm going to leave an open spot at one side, maybe. And um, you want the batting to catch in the, in the seams. Okay, so first, um, I'll show you the next step. We're going to make um, a cross on everything first. So we're going to stitch the batting down so it doesn't move anywhere. Then we're going to make some darts all the way around. And then we're going to sew the sandwiches together and top stitch it. It's a, just very few steps. But it's more than a regular pot holder. So if you're making these to sell, the amount of time you're going to put into it is a lot more than if you were just making a plain um, square pot holder. Okay, so I'm going to cut the rest of these, um, the rest of this batting up here that I have, and then we'll get back together and start sewing. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so um, before we get sewing, I would like to introduce you to the machine I'm on because I'm sure you'll be curious and you'll only be seeing it from the back once I get going. Um, this is a Memory Craft 6300 Professional and it handles the thickness of the batting and the cotton really well, much better than um, a smaller normal machine for home uh, use. In fact, I burned out a couple machines on this thickness of stuff, and I've also um, uh, broken a lot of needles. This machine is very strong, and it can handle going through these uh, layers of material really well. Um, it's called the Memory Craft 6300 Professional, and I got it from White Sewing Center in Easton, Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you why you should check them out. <laughs> Even on the phone, they'll help you with an order. I'm allergic to latex, so I couldn't go in the store to buy the machine, to even look at machines, to even try them out. Um, and I told them what I needed, I told them what I'd be sewing, and I also told them I was allergic to latex, and I'm not, I wasn't sure how to get a machine, because my machine had died out. So, um... They came up with this one. It was like the perfect thing for me. They took off the rubber feet that were on the bottom. Now I just like sit it usually on a 
a little rug or something but for the purposes here I just have it on the table and they brought it to me they delivered it to my house <laughs> um, no latex was in the box they really took care of me really well and I was 100% safe with this machine when I got it so um, one of the great things about it is it has a separate bobbin winder up here and um, all you do is you can actually keep sewing while you're winding bobbins it's like such a gift so you just hook up the bobbin on here and you push this across and then you press this little button here that says bobbin and it completely winds the bobbin for you it'll stop automatically and you can actually keep sewing while that's going on but it's really pretty fast I've had machines burn out because of winding so many bobbins too so this is a time saver and a machine saver then you just take it off and put it into the bobbin case here very nice very simple the machines real strong there are three um, different settings for speed <laughs> and it threads very simply and there's also no need to oil it for six months at a time when you take it to your shop they can oil it for you there's actually felts down in some oil they just put oil on the felts and um, and you're good to go you don't have to keep maintaining your machine so I'm going to put the sheen, machine or the camera back behind so you can see what I'm sewing and uh, then you'll know why this is such an awesome machine. It's the Janome New Home. Memorycraft 6300 Professional, the White Sewing Center in Easton, Pennsylvania. You'll be very happy if you get one of these. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to start sewing. What we have is the two squares that have the batting on the inside of the material. We are going to sew crosswise from one point to another, okay, like an X. We're going to make an X on here with the sewing. The thing is, you've got the padding, um, which would be really nice if you could sew it with it on the bottom, because then you could see, you know, how you're drawing your stitches from corner to corner. But if you do that, the needle pushes more of the fuzz down in the bobbin case. Okay, so what you got to do is, uh, what will help your machine better is if you put the cloth on the bottom and just sew on the quilting batting itself. Okay, so um, you can draw with chalk on your batting if you want to follow the X, but it's just as easy to just look from point to point. You'll get used to it and after you make a whole bunch of these <laughs> it will be no problem at all. So you want to always hang on to your bobbin threads when you start out your sewing. Um, that keeps them from drawing down in the machine and breaking your needles and jamming up your bobbin. So here we go. easy and we're gonna hook the next one right on because we have two to make and you can save yourself a lot of time from cutting threads and actually save a little thread too so we're gonna feed this second one in this is basically called chain piecing if you do a whole lot of these together So that chain piecing didn't go so well because it, it didn't have it under enough. But what I'm going to always do is trim every thread as I go because at the end I don't want to have to waste more time um, trimming. The less you have to, if you're making these for production, for like just gifts or anything and you want to save time, if you trim right away you will save a couple hours off of your time 
um, just in trimming alone. So always trim your threads. Here we go, we're going to do the next side of the X. Okay, and now we're doing the last uh, leg of the X. Okay, now this machine has a, a cutting mechanism. So this is the last piece I'm going to sew for a moment. So I press the scissors button and it clips the threads and they're down to a quarter of an inch and for the inside I won't go trimming that any further but that really makes a nice feature it leaves your hands free for cutting them apart alrighty I'll be on uh, with you in the next step in just a moment okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make four darts two on each uh, end and then flip it over and do two more so what I do is I fold this in half like so and then I pick a part, a part on my sewing machine that actually is as deep as the dart so I try to go for three quarters but if I lay my material in here and I can find a spot that would work good for me to get about the same size dart um, like see there's a mark of 20 here on my plate that is about as wide as I want it to be so I will put the foot down there I'm gonna like pull a little more thread out and then I'm gonna eyeball a dart so like we might want it to be two inches if you make it much thinner than that it's not going to curve up along your bowl so um, let me just give you a better measurement there twenty on my machine might mean something different than yours so yeah that's about three quarters of an inch okay so you want to start at three quarters of an inch you can put a pin in there or mark it somehow and then we want to come down about two inches two and a quarter inches so we'll just I'll show you how I do it um, it's just going to be something you get used to you're going to want to put it in the machine at an angle and uh, then we're going to have it at the 20 and we're just going to make a wedge okay now when you normally make a dart in sewing um, you tie the dart at the point in clothing or anything like that on this particular guy here I'm just going to do a back stitch back and forth to lock it in um, and then that will hold it really well through all the washings and the wear it's going to get okay now once again same thing since we're doing more than one we don't have to stop and pull the thread out and all that we're just going to fold our piece in half and we're going to make another dart up at the top of this one I'll put it at the mark it'll always be the same and this way you'll have consistent darts and the bull um, halves will go together better backspace and then we're done so then we can cut the thread we're going to do the same thing to the other end and then I'll come back and show you how to do the other side okay so now we're going to do the other end of this square so we've got the one dart here and I'm going to make another dart on this side. I'm going to do it to both pieces and I'll just um, do them at both at the same time, setting them at the same mark that I started the last dart.
threads. Now what I do when I cut these threads is I let the one from the dart hang a little bit long. And then I just trim it closer up at the top. That seems to me to be a, a second assurance that that dart's not gonna um, come apart during washing or anything. Just a safety feature. So now we're going to open this square up and we're going to see how the bowl is starting to form. We've got two darts and um, it's starting to curve up. So we're going to fold it in half the other way. Now these two darts, you can see them. Uh, we're going to kind of match them up a little bit, but the main thing is to get this folded in half here. And we're going to put another dart here. And then I'm going to turn around right away and put another dart down at this end. Okay? And I'm always start at that same mark on the machine. You can put a piece of tape there or something to help you remember. We've got all four darts done on both pieces and it begins to really take the bowl shape. We're going to leave one right side out and turn the other so that we put the right sides together. And when we put right sides together, it means we are putting the pretty side together, facing each other. Because now we're going to sew on the back. Now I'm just going to put some clips in this and tell you what I did and I'll be right back. Okay, now for this step I use um, clips. I used to use pins, but they bend, they get lost in the deep part of the uh, where all the darts and stuff are. It's really hard. So what I do now is I use these great pin or clips and you can get them all kinds of places. I'll give you some links to the things I'm using but you can get them at pretty much anywhere. Now I'm going to go around and match up the darts but I'm going to push one one way and one the other so that there's not 12 layers of fabric and batting to get through. Now the next step is I'm going to choose one side where I am going to leave it open so that I can turn it. Okay, so I'll just choose here, this side. It doesn't matter. All the sides are the same. Okay, and I'm going to move that over there and I'll put a clip on this other side. So that will tell me that I am not going to sew there. Okay, I will start sewing here. Where this um, opening is, I'm going to start sewing on one side. I'm going to go in about a half an inch. I'm going to round off the corner. Um, there's no real science to that. You can draw it on if you want to. Like if you take a something round. Let's see here. Okay. I take something round. And I take my chop. I can go to the corner and I can make a line around that round thing. 
and then that will help me make um, all the round corners the same you know but after you do these a while you just get used to making the curve and they all come out really close okay so I'll just show you how I do it without marking it but you're more than welcome to mark it some people take a like a little dessert plate and get the arc right just whichever kind of arc you want some people also will sew out to the corners and they will um, make a point and you can turn that and you'll have a sharp point for your um, for your corner I don't really do that myself because I end up with too much stuffing in the points and then um, I have trouble making the point nice and sharp so lately I have just been doing the rounded corners all right they're also easy to hang on to when you're eating and uh, they don't get in your way all right so I'm gonna start at my turning point and I'm gonna just sew completely around the pot holder and I'm going to make sure those darts are going in opposite directions okay <clears throat> so here we go tip here as you're going over these heavy spots um, try to keep the speed up on your sewing machine because it will get bogged down and you want to just run right over it you don't want to tug it or pull it because that'll break your needle but if you just run right over it kind of fast it'll um, go over it much better if you do it slowly you're gonna get stuck and then the machine's gonna buzz and you might break a needle so um, oh, let me get that out of the way Okay, so just kind of keep your speed up. Okay, so we have sewn completely around. Looks good. And we caught all the sides. That's one thing I always like to make sure check my seam allowances and make sure that all the fabrics are caught all right now I am not going to trim anything except the corners and the reason is um, some people like to trim their darts and press them open and all that kind of stuff but I think the more uh, thickness you leave there the better the pot holder is going to work as a pot holder um, it just gives it more padding and less chance of the heat or cold coming through so here, all I'm going to do now is just take off the corners. Okay. So I left plenty of space here so it's not going to uh, fray or open up and now we're just going to turn it inside out or the right sides out and you're on the last step where we just top stitch the edges down now I really really push out with my finger really hard to get the thicknesses and the corners the rounded corners turned well sometimes I even roll them a little bit and as I go this is the kind of thing where if I'm working on a whole lot of them at once I'll take them down and watch a movie while I'm turning all the pot holders that way it doesn't feel so boring sometimes I listen to a book on tape because I like to do more than one thing <laughs> At once and then I learn something or I hear a story okay so it really helps though to get your fingers inside the pot holder to push it and 
Okay, so I'll go back then. Roll it a little bit. These clips are beautiful for this because this kind of stuff is real thick. And pinning that is just a, a hand exercise you don't need. It's like really hard on your hands to keep that kind of pressure behind the pins. And these clips are real quick and they're actually really quick to take off as you're sewing. I, I didn't use these for a long time when they came out because I thought, oh, that's weird. <laughs> but I am now a fan. So, and they're really great for, for these pot holders. All right, now we're getting to the opening. So it gets a little trickier here. What we're going to do is push one dart one way and the other dart the other way. And fold it down about a quarter of an inch. Don't take any chances that this could possibly be too scant. Okay, you're better off taking a bigger chunk of material. See, we have like maybe a little bit more than a quarter. Because you don't want to have this open up on anybody. This is, and, and this is part of what you want the uh, top stitching to, we're going to start top stitching actually on this side. So that we are sure that we get all of those layers tucked down in and they won't ever open up. And then you can be consistent with the the width of your cross or your top stitching on the rest of the pot holder because that really doesn't matter. It's really for looks and it's to keep it consistent. And this top stitching on this side here is has a lot of purpose <laughs> and it's to keep the uh, seam closed. Okay, so I'm going to put that on the machine and we'll. Finish that part and your pot holder will be done. Now I'm going to start on the corner before the top stitching section here. Okay, that way I have a running start. was pretty heavy duty there for the machine to take and this machine just ran right over it but I had to keep my speed up so I didn't get stuck. Now the machine cut that, but as you can see, there's a little uh, bit of thread that the machine leaves behind and we just want to trim that right away. Okay, your bowl, and now your bowl pot holder is done. Ready to go get some soup or chili. And some people even use them for ice cream. <laughs> Keeps the cold off their hands. This, um, I use um, two different size, um, like a cereal bowl and a soup bowl size of Corel Wear in these and it fits perfectly. You can also heat a mug. Um, <laughs> lots of different sizes. But now, if you wanted to increase, make one for a bigger bowl, then you just make a couple more inches onto your square. Okay, so you can go with 12 inch square, 14 inch or you can even make it smaller. You can make an 8 inch square just um, that ho holds like a perfect um, dessert size bowl or also a measuring cup, like a one cup measuring cup or a um, 
What was I going to say? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, a mug. A mug fits in the 8 inch one really good. Okay, so these are washable, machine and washer and dryer safe. And um, happy, happy sewing. We're going to um, show you next how to make these in production. So I won't be talking a whole lot, but I'm just going to show you how I make like 20 at a time. You don't have to keep watching or you can speed through it. I'll probably speed through it a little bit um, just so you can see. But the less you have to handle each step or each piece, the more time you're going to save yourself. Okay, so I do like all the X's first and then I do all the darts and then I do all the sandwiches then I turn them all at once and then I top stitch them all at once so I'm just gonna keep sewing and show you how I do that and I hope it helps you and and help you it helps you with production making some nice gifts or even for craft shows or for selling online okay there's lots of different um, kinds of patterns out there for these but I seem to like this one the best and everybody I know um, likes to have them when I give them out <laughs> okay so I'll be right back and we'll start production sewing okay now so that you don't have to watch me uh, sew 20 pot holders I'm just gonna do two but you'll get the idea of the production style like how to do it so we're going to turn these over I'm going to put the batting down and I'm just going to sew four of these with the X's like we did in the beginning of the other one I'm going to try and go corner to corner Make sure we aren't going to get any wrinkles here. And at this point, we could trim this off because it's a little bit too big. And that'll help us uh, with the step where we sew them together. It will be nice and even. want to just keep an eye on your bobbin thread to make sure that it's not running out because it's a real sad moment <laughs> when you've been sewing for a long time and nothing's been stitched down so just keep an eye on it If you have um, a rather light colored um, fabric you're using, make sure there's no strings caught in between. Sometimes, you know, it'll it'll show through on the other side. So I'll just make sure there's none of that going on. Here's a place where you really don't want this to like push and get a crease in there so just take the few seconds and smooth it out. It's better than having to rip this kind of stuff out. It's hard when it's quilted. Okay. 
and I sometimes give it a little tug, especially when it gets close to the cross there. So you can see that works out really good to do all that step at once. Same motion and you just keep stringing them along. And now what we're going to do is make the darts. So I'm going to fold it nice. Go to my 20 mark. And sometimes you can feel under there that it's not quite smooth. So take the time to make sure it's not going to get buckled up. Do the back spacing. Back stitching, I mean. All right, and then we're going to take the next one and do it again. Time to trim it so you can see what you're doing. just need to do the other side. Three out of four are done. Thank you. 
Okay, now we're going to pin the darts and sew it around and leave the opening. On this one, I would just uh, line up my dart, but this is where I'm going to make the opening. So I'm just going to clip it like that. I don't like the really big clips. I like these small ones because they have a lot of uh, pinch to them. Okay, and I'm going to start here. But let me pin this one first. Or clip it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sniffing a little bit. Allergies are crazy this year. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to start uh, sewing where I have the end of the opening. And then I'm going to make a curve. trim this one right away because then I don't have to have it in my hands again until I tr turn it. So the idea is to touch each piece for as little as possible. If you're trying to make time and uh, make some money, <laughs> you have to find uh, ways to make uh, and uh, make the time work for you. And the best time is to have your hands on the piece as little as possible. As many, as few steps as possible. Taking it off the corners, I'm trying to leave the seams full because that helps it uh, work as a pot holder. The more layers you have between the hot dish and your hands, the better. Now, since this is 100% cotton we're using in here, um, it has a natural percentage that it shrinks. And so it's going to pull your pot holder in a little bit, but it's actually going to make it thicker, and that's a good thing. So don't worry if it seems to shrink. It just gives it a quilted look. And um, 
It's actually going to make it a better pot holder because it's going to make it thicker. Don't be afraid to wash them. You got to keep food germs out of the pot holders. You don't need to put spaghetti sauce on it and then cook something else in it the next time. Make sure you wash them. I use hot water to wash the fabrics before I even um, make anything. And then I use hot water in all my wash because I'm allergic to everything and it keeps um, allergens down and dust down. And you can match your seams up here and make that look nice. Sometimes you'll see a few stitches in there and I always try to stuff them down in so they don't show. This is the opening. Now in this case, if I was making 20 of these, I would trim them all and then go do like watch a movie or something while I trim while I turn them and clip them. Because it could take a lot of time if you're making a lot. You can use these for fundraisers. Um, if you have um, a print or colors that are school colors, you could make one side of the pot holder one color and one another. So you can turn them inside out and... Uh, have more than one <laughs> kind of fabric on them. Another thing that you can do is make a patchwork like um, some crazy quilting and use that on here and it will actually where the seams are for the crazy quilting. Um, the more seams you have in there the more protection you have from the heat so that just makes it a little heavier and it makes it work better so we just kind of roll those seams out so they don't get caught in if you're making pointy corners instead of rounded ones you can use the tip of your scissors to push it out or a chopstick something strong and pointy and don't forget to fold these each another direction There's an advantage to not having that batting go all the way out to the edge. And you'll notice it most when you hit this, this turning section. It's hard and it makes it really thick. So, so here I got a little bit of stitches showing. So I'm just going to tuck them down in. Okay, now we're going to start before the opening. one push the stitches or the strings to the back do one clip and you are done one more for the pile here's the pile <laughs> okay now we're gonna do another one 
This part goes really fast if you have 20 of them and they're all clipped together. done. All you got to do is uh, put your tags on them if you're going to have tags and you can turn them either way. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this um, video. I'm going to have a lot more videos when it comes uh, as we go week by week. All different kinds of craft projects, a lot of sewing projects, quilting, you name it, we're going to do it. So um, stay tuned to Mama Llama Razzle Dazzle. I appreciate you coming to see. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.